Hello and welcome Success Grid Nation to this episode of the Success Grid podcast with Michael Levitt. He is the founder and chief burnout officer of the Breakfast Leadership Network, a San Diego and Toronto-based media firm. He is an in-person and certified virtual speaker, a certified NLP and CBT therapist, a Fortune 500 consultant, best-selling author, and the host of the Breakfast Leadership Show. So uh, should I go on? <laughs> is there anything else you are not doing now, Michael? <laughs> um i i don't know if i have capacity to do anymore but um um i the, in this morning uh in the shower a book idea came to mind and i'm thinking okay well i'm going to frame out the outline of that book over this weekend coming up and so i'll be writing another book which tends to happen to those that you know, have ever written a book sometimes you write one and you go okay you, you forget the trauma of writing a book. So you go ahead and do it again. And then you forget because it, it's, it, it's time consuming for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of time and effort goes into it, but yeah, that every time I hear all the things that I've been fortunate enough to accomplish in my career, I, I go, wow. It's like, here I am talking about burnout, but you look at all those things. You're like, wow, are you burned out? And I used to be, but now I'm not. So uh, I'm looking forward to our conversation today. Awesome, awesome. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Did you start in corporate? Did you work in corporate? How did this transition come out? And where are you now? And where did you get the idea of starting this business that you are now? And specifically, we're talking about here about burning out. So what does that even mean? You know, like, is, are we tired uh, when don't want to do certain things, these kind of things? Yeah, I started off originally in public accounting. So I worked for an accounting firm for the first eight years of my career, excluding my first job, which was at a grocery store, which actually I highly recommend people either work at a fast food restaurant or a grocery store for their first job because you will work. Most of us did work in a restaurant, yes. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, so you will work with pretty much every level of society. Um, so it, it helped me as far as customer service and being able to relate to people, you know, whether they were very affluent and very wealthy to homeless people that were able to scrounge up enough money to buy a couple things. So, but you know, went into the accounting world and did that for a few years and then you know, worked in several industries, uh, including startups and internet research firms and, and whatnot. And then uh, back in 2007, uh, I, I went into the nonprofit world and led mm-hmm. a, uh, a government-funded medic, uh, medical clinic uh, just outside of Windsor, Ontario, Canada. I'm originally from the States, and I immigrated to Canada uh, in 2004, uh, but I, I started with this uh, clinic in 2007, so it was my first entry in the nonprofit world. And that's where my burnout journey began and how I ended up where I am today doing the work that I do. I was working at the startup healthcare organization. And for those that have ever been a part of a startup, you know, you put in a lot of hours. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I was putting in some absolutely insane hours. I was working basically from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. seven days a week. And I did that Mm -hmm. for a couple of years. And again, if you're... If you're an entrepreneur or small business owner, you know that sometimes it takes long hours. But I was an employee of this organization, but I acted as if this was my company. Mm -hmm. And while there's a lot to be said about doing that, sometimes the toll uh, is insurmountable. So what happened, you know, is I became burned out, you know, and burnout, you know, real quick before I continue my story is when you're physically and mentally drained, you're overwhelmed with all the to-dos of life. Um, You're just not yourself. Um, You start having some mental and physical health issues and you just, you don't feel like continuing. It's very similar to depression. The biggest difference that I've seen in the research uh, that I've been a part of. Yeah, go ahead. So depression is, burnout is like the the same side of depression. Is this, is this really true? There, there's a lot of similarities and there's still a lot of studies going on, but there are a lot Mm -hmm. of similar traits between burnout and depression. The biggest difference is when you're clinically depressed often you are not able to function or get out of bed or do anything with burnout. You still have some energy to be able to muscle through the day, even though you are 
just completely wiped out and drained and fatigued. And it, it's, it's just not a good situation. That's what my situation was. You know, I was just completely worn out mentally and physically. Didn't feel like doing anything outside of work again, because I was working so many hours and it all came to a crashing halt in May of 2009, where over a period of a year, the following happened to me. Uh, in May of 2009, I had a heart attack that should have killed me. My cardiologist told me before he operated on my heart, so you should be dead, uh, which I, I accused well, him of skipping bedside manner class. <laughs> just, just said that, that to you. Yeah, he said that. So you should Whoa. be dead. I'm like, yeah. I'm like hmm, wow. Okay. Well, good thing I'm not. Yeah, and, but, yeah, that, yeah. But, but that set off a series of other events and about three months after that um i lost that job that i was working at they wanted to go in a different direction maybe they were scared um that i was going to take legal action against them because i was working so many hours but i you know didn't <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it there over time uh, and stuff like that? yeah and it, so it was you know obviously uh a difficult departure on that. But the mm -hmm. problem with that situation is one, okay, I'm just coming off of having a cardiac event mm -hmm. and then I'm without a job. And the timing of this was still towards the tail end of the great recession in the U S and Canada. And there wasn't many jobs around at that point because I was in the Windsor area and that's across the border from Detroit, Michigan, where the U S auto sector was dying. You know, the government had to bail, bail out most of the automakers because if they didn't, General Motors and Chrysler would have been gone. Um, mm -hmm. And so there wasn't many jobs to be found. And so it took me several months to be able to find a new role, which required a relocation to Toronto. Now, after I relocated to Toronto, um, I, my because when you're on when you're without a job and you're on unemployment, you're getting government assistance, you don't get your full paycheck. So we were having some difficulties paying bills because I also had to take heart medication that I didn't have any coverage for. So it was mm. about a, about a thousand dollars a month for the medication that I was on. And that anybody that says, okay, congratulations, here's a new, here's a new monthly bill of a thousand dollars. That would bury many people. A lot of people would be in deep trouble if they had to take on an additional burden of a thousand bucks a month. And obviously it was huge for us. Uh, and unfortunately, when you are on unemployment, you're getting less money and you got this new bill and all that. It, it does impact your ability to pay bills yeah, like many people were dealing with. And eventually it came to the point where the bank had to repossess our family vehicle. And then a few weeks after that, after we had moved the family up to Toronto, we were getting ready to sell our house that we had in the Windsor area the bank decided to foreclose the house before we put it up for sale. So mm -hmm. in a year, heart attack that should have killed me, lost my job, lost my car, lost my home. A lot Now, of things, a lot of them, a lot of things at this small period of time, a short period yeah. of time. Yeah. I, I figure, you know, let's just get it done and over with, you know, I think that was, I, I mean, that wasn't necessarily my direction or path or choice, but I'm thankful that it happened that way because it allowed me to go, okay, here we go. You know, Here's an opportunity to you can you can be, press on the restart button again, I guess. Exactly, and that really was what it was for me. As I, I took it upon myself to reset, uh, and many people do. A lot don't, unfortunately. A, a lot of people, in talking with my healthcare providers and having worked in healthcare as long as I did, majority of people don't make the changes that they need to do in order to prevent um, the significant health situation that I had. And what I was facing. Most people don't make the changes. They say, okay, well, I survived it. I got medication now. I should be good. And I didn't want to be on that medication. Mm -hmm. So I worked really, really hard to lose the weight that I needed to lose, take better care of myself, change my outlook on things, and completely reinvent myself. And before I continue, I want to warn people if you're burned out or you're burning out or you're under a lot of stress, The majority of you do not need to reinvent yourself. You've got to make a couple adjustments here and there in, in how you do things in your life. And it'll be a big, big difference for you. In my situation, because of everything that happened to me, it was like, okay, well, you know, you pretty much lost everything. Let's start from scratch. Let's yeah. go ahead and re reboot and, <laughs> and, 
and let's try this a different way because the, the way that I was doing certainly wasn't working. Yeah, exactly. So tell me this. You mentioned that like people don't need to reinvent things. They need to make certain tweaks. But also from your from you talking, I hear like being in burnout. So basically, if you're doing your job or uh, you're an entrepreneur or a business owner, it feels like you don't want to do certain things for a certain amount of time, right? So what are the things that that person should be focusing on and the tweaks should take on to change things and flip 180 degrees? Yeah, the big thing, there's three things that I usually have people do Number or suggest that they do. Number one is you need to look at how you are sleeping. You know, what's your mm -hmm. sleep life like? Are you sleeping well or are you tossing and turning? Now, if you're doing this and it's night after night after night, that's a huge problem because sleep is so critically important for every aspect of our life, our cognitive, our, our cognitive ability, our relationships, our digestive system our ability to problem solve, our ability to do everything we do in life requires decent rest and decent sleep. Because when we sleep and we get good sleep, we repair the damage to ourselves that we do on a daily basis. Now you could live the healthiest of lifestyles, get plenty of exercise, eat all the right foods for you. We still face stressors in our life, whether it's situations at work, situations with family or friends, I don't know, maybe we're in the middle of a pandemic, you know, that's stressful. That's been stressful for a lot of people. Mm. So not getting good sleep. What happens is all that damage that we do to ourselves on a daily basis doesn't get repaired when we sleep, because when we get good restful sleep, that's what happens. Our body starts working through everything that we went through the day before and does some repairs. And then we feel rested and we can take on the next day. You know, I cannot promise that you won't have stress in your life. That's impossible. There's going to be stressors. How you deal with them, how you navigate through them, depends on how well you are, you know, both mentally and physically. So if you're getting good sleep, it means your body's rested, which means your mind is rested and more alert. So you can navigate it through stressful situations and not take them on so personally. So when you get good sleep, that helps. The second thing that ties into that as well is your digestive system and what you eat. You know, I'm not going to tell you don't eat at a fast food restaurant or things like that. You know what? Eat wherever you want. But for me, one of the things that I did last year, and I've been talking about it for a while, but I finally ended up doing it was I went and got a food sensitivity test. And this mm -hmm. test ran through and tested over 250 types of foods. You name it. There was just, I mean, pretty much anything that you would possibly ever eat. If you went to a restaurant or what pe most people eat at home, it tested me on those things. And it would, it gave me a report on what things I'm good with and what things I have an intolerance to. And then some things that I all have basically an allergy to. Um, thankfully, there's very few things that I'm allergic to, but there's obviously a ton of things that I have some insensitive, you know, problems with. And the reason why that's so important is our gut tends to work while we sleep, you know, mm -hmm. kind of breaks down things and all of that. So if you're eating a lot of foods that you have an insensitivity to, it's basically, I don't want to call it a poison, but in a way it's kind of a foreign object. So your body is going, I don't know what to do with this. So it stresses, it works with the brain. The brain says, okay, here's what you need to do. And eventually, you know, passes through your system but it doesn't pass through as easily as other foods that you don't have an intolerance to. Yeah. So if you, if you reduce or eliminate those foods, that means your gut isn't overactive while you sleep, which means you will less likely have your acid reflux, your stomach issues that, you know, keep people up at night and, and all that, which then means you get a better night of sleep, which goes back to what we were talking about before. So, you know, that's the second thing. So the first thing is make sure you get really good sleep. Second thing is you know, make sure you're, you, know, you figure out what foods are good for you. And because everybody's different and these tests you're available online and you know, your healthcare provider can usually write you a referral for getting one. They're, they're really good because in that way you can, again, eat the foods that are right for you. And then the third thing is when you're stressed and you're burned out, 
and you're working a lot of hours, one of the things that happens is you cut out of your life things that you enjoy doing because you quote unquote, don't have enough time. Even if you do something for 15 minutes, um, when you normally would take maybe half an hour or an hour to do is still beneficial. I think in life, we, we think we, we try to compartmentalize things of our life. It's like, okay, I'm going to read a book or I'm going to watch some television, or I'm going to go for a walk, or I'm going to go have coffee with my friend, whatever the case may be. When we're working a lot, we cut those things out. Yeah. And instead of cutting them out, say, all right, you know what? I don't have a half hour today or 45 minutes, but can we at least catch up for about 10 or 15 minutes? You're still doing it. Yes, it's condensed, but you're still doing something that's beneficial to you. Now, there's a big movement on self-care and taking care of yourself. Doing things in life you enjoy to do is self-care. So if you like going shopping or like going to sporting events or concerts or going out to eat or going into a coffee shop or hiking or golfing or you name it, going to the movies, whatever the case may be. If you like doing those things, that's self-care. That's doing things in life you enjoy doing. And what I find is when people are stressed and burned out, they cut those things out. And what happens when you do that? You're just making the burnout and stress worse because you, yeah. yeah. you don't have an escape. Now, escape's not the right word, but you don't have a way to kind of harmonize your life back into doing some things that you're enjoying. Because if you're just working and it's a decline and sometimes for some people it's quick for me it was over a couple of years you just life isn't enjoyable and then you get stressed because you're not doing things you like doing and then you're too tired or fatigued because you're not getting good rest because you're working too much or you're not doing the things in life to help you yeah, there's many organizations and many companies and many types of roles where you have to work long hours it's been the case since the beginning of time, and ever since we've been working, or whatever we call labor, there have been situations where those are long days, you know, and, yeah. and so, and the, the thing that, you know, that really, you know, came to light with me when I first started you know, working with organizations and their teams on burnout prevention is, you could have two identical jobs, and two different people are doing them. One of these people are burning out and having a really difficult time. The other person working the same hours, same type of work, is fine. I'm like, okay, what's the difference here? Yeah. And a lot of it is just how they how they approach life, their lifestyle, what they do, what's important to them, and you know all the external factors that tend to weigh on us. So when you, you realize that, it's like, okay, well, let's see if we can introduce some of those habits that the person that's not stressed yeah. and burned out you and mentioned it that way. You mentioned habits. This is especially on the third point here. You mentioned it. It happens actually through entrepreneurs, for example, or business owners or whoever. We want to focus more on the business. This is what we think. We want to focus on the business more so we can increase revenues and advance our business and have more growth in it. But like you mentioned, it's sometimes and actually a lot of times it goes back and reverse. And you, when you are not doing the thing, things that you enjoy doing and you cut them out and you start focusing more on the business or the start or whatever it is that or your job or career and it becomes a lot of your your day uh, with that it, it becomes it gives like uh, backward results right and and that like you mentioned here now habits so how do we make more and better habits to integrate uh, good habits with, let's say, not being burned out so, so much. Yeah, before I get to the habits, I, I just want to comment on what you just said. When you're burned out, and I mentioned before, you know, not getting good sleep is your cognitive ability gets impacted, but also clarity. Entrepreneurs that are working long hours and they're working in their business and not on their business and work, I got to do this because I got to generate more revenue it's in a way like getting on a hamster wheel and they can't quite get off of that wheel where if you take time away and you, you literally build take, in take some breaks, yeah. yeah, you have to, it's think about it. It's like any athlete, you know, they have to, you know, they have to take time. There's a breaks, there's timeouts, there's things where they can rest, recover, and then get back into the game. It's the same thing with us. We can't just go, 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 even machines. There's a <laughs> 
there's machines. It's like, okay, we, we have maintenance. To, you, know, you get emails, you know, from a variety of different things. It could be your bank. It could be, you know, if you invest, maybe your online investment place or whatever. And you'll get an email. It's like, okay, we're doing some maintenance between midnight and 5 a.m. on Saturday. Okay, well, that's, you know, to minimize downtime for the majority of people that are using it. Those machines still need maintenance as do we so we have to yeah, make sure that we do it yeah, so when exactly. we when we when we take the time away then and you start resting and relaxing a little bit clarity comes and you start thinking of business opportunities and you know my own business you know it, you know the growth that i've had has been slow steady and then you know, you start seeing some things picked up and of course you know this pandemic has been you know quite quite productive as far as opportunities because a lot of people took time and then they started realizing, wait a minute, our team is burned out. Our organization's burned out. What's going on? So now, you know, they're looking at ways to how do we address this? But to get back to your original question on habits, one of the big things that has helped me and help, you know, clients that I've served is getting crystal clear on how you spend your time. Now, my original career, as I mentioned, was uh, public accounting, billable hours. We had to track all of our time uh, on a timesheet. We had to bill in 15-minute increments and I actually worked for a CPA firm that did every 12 minutes. And they're like, wow, that's why is that? Well, it's because instead of you know 15 minutes in an hour, there's four parts. They build it in 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. That's five. Mm -hmm. You do that times eight. It, it, it increased the revenue because they were able to build more and because they charged Smart. certain increments. Yeah, it was, it was brilliant. And it's like, okay, amazing that the accountants came up with a creative idea, but it happens. But for us, scheduling your time is important because then you can see how you're spending your time because most people don't, you know, okay. Yeah. If they're working on projects or whatever, they'll, they'll put it on their calendar and they'll you know, do some things or appointments and whatnot but everything else is pretty barren as far as them scheduling things. What gets scheduled gets done. So schedule your time or keep track of how you're spending your time. Don't beat yourself up. So if you're you know, spending you know, 10 hours a weekend watching Netflix or something, so be it. Okay. <laughs> you are. That's great. Document that. Now, if, if, if it bothers you like, wow, I could have done something else with that time. All right. Well, now the, now, you know, and then you can adjust accordingly. So going back to that self-care conversation we had a few minutes ago, what you want to do is schedule everything, including your self-care time, which could be exercise or whatever the case may be. And a lot of people are like, you want me to schedule everything? Mm -hmm. Yes, initially. So that way, you know how you're spending your time and you can look at it and go, wow, I am spending a lot of time on this. And that's why I don't feel I have enough time to do this. And that self-care, the me time, the doing the fun things in life or exercise or shopping or coffee meetings or watching movie, whatever the case may be, pick your favorite color. So it doesn't matter if you use a paper calendar or a digital one, pick your favorite color. If you're colorblind, which I have a lot of friends that are colorblind, um, interesting that I do, but you know, it just seems to be common in my world for some reason then you can't obviously color is not going to work for you. So use your favorite symbol, you know, draw a star or a box or um, an asterisk, whatever the case may be. So that way, when you look at your calendar, you can, you don't even have to look at the text. You can just kind of squint and you can see those symbols or see the colors for your self care. And if you don't see enough time in your calendar for self care, then you realize, okay, I'm not, I'm not spending enough time on things that are beneficial for me. And then you can adjust. And yeah, it's exactly. I, I, a lot of people think it's a set it and forget it kind of thing. It's not. It's every day is a new adventure. Yeah, every so, week yeah, is so, different. So you're talking here about, I don't know, maybe is it setting goals has to do with it? Or actually if each one of us should have a to-do list or this is like beyond a to-do list. Yeah, for, for the calendar, you, you, you want your, your to-do list and your calendar to be different. You know, a to-do list or a goals list, yes, you definitely want to write those down. You, you have to, on any given day, for example, 
there's typically at maximum three things that I want to accomplish during that day. Now, my to-do list is obviously longer than three items, but I will say, okay, on Friday, these are the two or three things that I want to work on today. And I, I can have it on the top of a sheet where I says, okay, the must do things for today and unless two or three, and then down at the bottom can be all the other to-do list items. Okay. So let's say the stars align and I get everything done. As an entrepreneur or someone that's driven, that's task oriented and wants to get a lot of things done, there's going to be that desire for you to say, all right, let's go tackle that to-do list. I got the energy. Let's do it. That's where we get in trouble. That's where we can overwhelm ourselves and overcommit ourselves and then get stressed out and prolonged stress turns into burnout. So my recommendation is only pick two or three things a day that you want to accomplish. Once you accomplish those, stop. If you can, at all possible, stop. Step away from the to-do list. Go outside, breathe in fresh air. If you have a dog, go take the dog for an extra walk, whatever you need to do. Just kind of step away from things. To clear, the, to clear the mind and just be... Clear. Yeah, not be over overwhelmed and overthinking things. And I have to yeah. do this now because if I don't do this now, I am not going to make more money or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. It's and it's a way for you to get some clarity. And then also, you know, as you get used to this method, what happens is, and this is something that I've done as well. You know, and I've, you know, as an entrepreneur, you can do it. And even if you work for somebody, you can work with your bosses and still do this. Design your weekdays or your work days. You know, some people work on the weekends. As long as you're taking some time off and not working, that's important. But do your best to try to batch like things together. So, you know, real quick and, and how I operate. Um, I'm a public speaker. So I do keynote talks and all that good stuff. So on Mondays, is when I tend to do a lot of research and reaching out to event planners and all of that are following up with speaking engagements and whatnot. Tuesdays tend to be either intro calls or follow-up phone calls, things like that. Wednesdays for my show is typically the day that I record interviews. Thursdays and Fridays, I don't schedule. And there, there's a reason for that. Um, it, it's not that I have this glorious three-day work week uh, I'm sure a lot of us would be, that's awesome. Well, you know, that'd be great if you're generating enough revenue to cover the, what you wanted to cover in life. If you can do that, that's awesome. It's not that I don't work on Thursdays and Fridays. It's like, I don't schedule anything except for maybe that week or for like in this situation here, you know, this is a day that worked for me. I'll, I'll go on interviews and, and talk with media or, you know, have phone calls and things like that, or even follow-up phone calls that may have been you know, driven from a couple days ago. Because I leave those days empty, it gives me the opportunity for one, the, you know, anything that's last minute that I got to address or opportunities like this to be on your show. If I had loaded that up, then, and then we were talking in the pre-show, you know, we, we tried lining this up a long time ago. Uh, part, part of me thinks it was before the pandemic started, which I know wasn't true, but, <laughs> but, it, but it certainly felt like that. I'm like, and I didn't even bother. I didn't even bother looking, but I know it's been quite a long time. So I'm thankful that we're finally doing this. Um, but at, at the end of the day, if you can batch like things together, that works out really well for you. Because the reason is if you put, you know, certain tasks or things you're working on together that are similar in nature, then you're using that quadrant of the brain to use all that and use your energy. So you're not switching back and forth on, you know, the different parts of your brain, uh, you know, from, you know, maybe it's tasks, then you got to do phone calls and there's, you're using your full brain, which you should do, but if you can group like things together, what happens is you get into a state of flow and all of a sudden you start flowing through it and you get things done a little bit faster. Yeah. That's, which that's very mean, important. Yeah. Yeah. So by and just, you know, and that's a technique that yeah, I've been using for a long time and it, it makes things so much easier. It doesn't, you know, and every day can be different. I mean, something could pop up you know, this afternoon or, you know, maybe on a Tuesday or something where I got to work on something instead of doing 
phone calls. Yeah. But but the thing of it is, is having some elbow room in your day and making sure that if something runs a little bit longer, it's not a big deal. Yeah. Or if you finish something quickly, then guess what? You found some time to just do something fun or it's like, you know, I'm going to go exactly. grab a coffee or, or I'm going to, I'm going to take a little bit longer lunch today, or, you know, maybe, maybe I'll reach out and you know, call mm. a friend that I haven't talked to. There's, just, it gives you those opportunities. Just one idea. This, uh, sometimes we talk a lot of procrastination, right? So do you think that people who are procrastinating and keep delaying things and keep delaying things that also can lead to them be, being burned out? Because, because they are thinking like, I might do it tomorrow, no, next week, next month. So this thinking and not doing actually the thing, it leads to more being bent out into instead of getting things done and finishing from it. Yeah, I, I think it's a big contributor to stress for sure, which of course prolonged stress turns into burnout. It's when you're putting something off, you could be, let's say you're working on something else you're still thinking about that thing that you're putting off. So it's weighing on your ability to do the work that you're doing right now on something else. It's impacting the quality of that work. Brian Tracy wrote a book many years ago that talked about eating the frog first. Now I've never ate frog. I don't plan on ever eating one. <laughs> Me too. Uh, I've never, you know, I, I know some people like frog legs. That's awesome. Good for you. I remember playing with them as a kid, you know, in my backyard, because there was a, there was a river behind us. So there was all kinds of little things like frogs and snakes and other fun stuff. I didn't play with the snakes, but I did play with the frogs. But end of the day, that analogy is take that thing that you're dreading, get it over with. Yeah, just take the leap. Just take the leap, and and you will sure get on the next side or the other side. It does not have to be per- this. This is the problem. We all think, uh, especially business owners. I think maybe an entrepreneurs. They want to do things like one hundred percent, and maybe one hundred ten percent if that's even possible. So yeah. so that does not happen. You learn as you go. It's a process you can get better each day. So it does not have to be perfect to get it done. You just have to get it done. Yep. Yeah, it's a case of, you know, there was a a guy named uh, Marshall Silver. He's out in Vegas. He used to be on the Letterman show quite a bit, you know, hypnotist and did all kinds of stuff. So he does a lot of talks and events and whatnot. And I went to one of his events a couple of years ago. And he said, you know, for entrepreneurs, we're all focused on this has to be perfect. He's like, you know what? Put out crap 1.0. And then as you learn about it, you're going to put out crap 2.0. Then you're going to put out crap 3.0. Let's think about Microsoft Windows for a second. In the last year, they've released Windows 11. Yeah. Okay. It sucks. There's, been, anyway, there's, ten, sucks. there's, ten, there's, there's 10 previous versions that you know, had all kinds of issues. 11 still does too. You yeah. know, I've, I've used Microsoft products for a long time. I'm using a MacBook right now. Um, because I just like what they are. I mean, I'm not against Windows computers, but I love using Mac uh, because it works for me and how I do things. And I don't have to think about it. And I don't have to worry about things because it's just going to work. Um, So it's people, this perfection thing is going to hold you back. Yes. Are there going to be critics of what you offer? Of course. But there's also going to be champions of what you do. You're going to impact lives with your product or service. So get it out there. Don't, don't rob people because you're like, eh, it's not quite ready yet. Put it out there. Get feedback. Say, okay, what can I do to make this better? Your customers will tell you if you engage with them. They'll tell you, okay, you know, uh, this would work better or how about this? Then it makes your product or service better because you've got extra input that quite frankly, you're not really paying for because your customer has already paid you for the service. So they're giving you some guidance and quality control on what you're offering. So it's making it better. Uh, and it just, because they are going to be aware of what needs to be done on it. And it just, you know, that's why you, you have all types of, you know, surveys and things like that, because people want to know, okay, what can we do to make this better? And they, people do take those ideas to improve the products and services. You know, think about like Zoom, you know, we're on Zoom right now. Yeah. And I've been using, I have been using Zoom for quite a long time, you know, since probably 2017. And, you know, the version of it is now 
is definitely better and a lot more bells and whistles than that 2017 version. Yeah. Why? Because they had a lot of people provide input. And of course, over the last couple of years, they've had a lot of people give them input yeah. because they had know, a lot of growth in the past two years. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, they, the, the, they, the, they, the, they those Skype, those Skype was popular at the time, but I'm I'm not hearing anyone talking about Skype right now. So <laughs> no, and and, Mike, and Microsoft paid a bunch of money to get Skype, and you know they're they're having it integrated within you know their operating system to make it easier. I think um, I've used Skype from time to time. I know how to use it, but you know for me it's like yeah, I just use Zoom because uh, yeah. I like how it works and so, it gives me a lot of functionality. Yeah, so we're talking here about internet tools. So speaking of these tools, what do you think there are some tools that can help us in keeping burnout away, whether they are online tools, what, what, whatever kind of tool there is? Yeah, I, I think you know, for me, um, your calendar, you know, using calendar app is good. There's a ton of you know, apps that are available both on iPhones and Androids for either meditation or tracking your activity, you know, mm. Apple watch, you know, I, I, it tells me, Hey, you should probably stand, you know, it tells me, okay, stand up, which is good. You know, we get up and move because we get so focused on our work. We may forget to actually you're still, you're still stand sitting. Up. Yeah. We, we sit yeah. Yeah. as I think, I think Tony Robbins mentioned that once we live in a box, we sit in a box, we go in a box. So meaning that we are all over, the, we are all, all the time we are sitting down. So <laughs> we are not moving. Yeah, exactly. Now, now Tony's really tall. So a lot of times <laughs> depending depending on where he's at he might not be standing straight up because you know he's taller than the doorway or whatnot but he seems to have navigated that okay so i don't recall i don't recall seeing you know his head bent and but you know he's he's wearing a ball cap a little bit more now and so yeah. maybe that's you know that bill is like warning him okay i gotta duck but I, i'm guessing by now he he remembers that he has to do that but it makes perfect sense you know it's so you know, utilizing a calendar to track your time using some apps to to help you keep track of what you eat, your activity levels and all that, because we don't, we don't naturally know how to do that. You yeah, know, yeah, some exactly. of us might. We, we, we forget, way. we forget to do, like you mentioned, the things that actually make us, especially when we are, we were, when we were kids, like the things that we used to have fun with and not think too much. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you know, kids today are, you know, have a lot of additional stimulus type things, you know, toys, iPads, you know, computers, screen time, you name it, you know, where when I was a kid, you really didn't have any of that. So we were outside moving around and all of that. So it's again, one of those things where making sure that you keep active, making sure you're getting a good night's sleep. And, you know, these, these smart apps do that too. They'll say, yeah, it looks like you got about seven hours sleep last night. Well, okay, good. It, and it, again, it, it helps it's in a way, it's a way to keep track of how things are. And then you can look at it over a period of time saying, okay, over the last two weeks, my sleep is down quality sleeps down 20%. Okay. What's mm. going on? You know, what, 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 what's happening? You know, is it, Am I traveling a lot? Is there a stressful situation going on at home or at work? Um, if, if my dietary choice has not been good, and you can you can actually start looking at the information and realize, hmm, okay, let's adjust these things. Because if you don't track it, then you won't necessarily know. You won't yeah. you won't you won't clue into it. So again, any any app, and there's a ton of them out there. So you find the one that works best for you. I don't recommend any particular app over another um i know there's you know some apps that i've partnered with um that you know, help keep track of your energy levels and, and whatnot but that that this is not a paid endorsement type of thing so i, I don't tend to share what that is you know if people want to know about more they can reach out to me but other than that i uh it's it's one of those things where it helps me kind of get an gauge as to what kind of day i'm going to have and then i adjust accordingly mm. and it, it, again, it, it harmonizes how it matches your energy levels to the work you need to do and how you're feeling. So, you know, okay, today I've got a push day. Okay. Then, you know, I can, I can go do it. I can push myself a little bit. Maybe, maybe I can work out a little bit longer or, you know, take the extra flight of stairs or, 
you know, okay, today's a recovery day. All right, well, I better just kind of take a couple notches down and just kind of ease into things. And, you know, knowing what those days are can help guide you. And yeah. over time, I can wake up in the morning and go, yeah, today's going to be a push day. I already feel it. And then there's going to be days where it's like, okay, today's a day where, okay, let's get out of bed and see what happens kind of day, but which is rare for me, but it does happen. But it's again, find the apps that work for you that you'll use because you can download a thousand apps on your phone and not use any of them. Do you think, for example, reading, reading books uh, is a good stress relief can be beneficial in this, especially we're talking here about, you have a book called burnout proof. Mm-hmm. So, so did you have burnout writing that book, for example? <laughs> or no, was no. It just, okay, tell us about the, the book. Yeah, yeah. Burnout proof is you know it goes through, um, and it all started. It it was birthed from those uh, social media posts I did a couple of years ago, where I took the word burnout and I assigned a word for every letter in the word burnout. So B is for boundaries. U is for unhappy, R is for rhythm, N is for neglect, O is for offside. Um, the, <laughs> the, other, the other U is upheaval, and then T is for time. And I went into each of those things and why burnout can happen if you don't have boundaries in life. It can happen if you're unhappy in life. If you're out of rhythm, you can burn out. If you're neglecting your wellness, that's going to be a big problem offside if you're not living life the way you should then you're out of bounds or offside uh, the other you upheaval when you're burned out your life can be turned upside down and then t a time you know, as we've talked about before how you spend your time is going to dictate you know how you live and if you're not harmonizing wellness and taking care of yourself with activities and leisure and work and all of that, then, you know, that could be really problematic. So that's what the book is, is basically about. And, you know, to talk about the reading thing. Yeah. I, I think reading is one of those things that is amazing because in life and especially with smartphones and distractions and yeah. everything else that's going on, reading is one of those things that is singular in nature. You can't read a book and watch a television show at the same time and really grasp it. Or you can't read a book while you're driving. Now you can listen to an audio book and you can yeah. retain some things, but you're still hopefully focusing on your driving. <laughs> if you use, hopefully. <laughs> I, I, then I, then oh. you might go into the tree that they took the paper from, so. <laughs> exactly, so um, yeah, exactly. So, oh, and Elon Musk you know, hasn't turned on the self-driving feature in the Tesla's fully yet, so we're not there yet. Maybe in you know in the next you know decade or so that'll be more prevalent, so you can actually sit in your car in yeah. and read a book. So, if so you do you do you do you yourself prefer audio books or uh, regular books? Um, I use both. I tend to like to actually read the books instead of the audio. I mean, sometimes I'll listen to the audio, but what I find for me is you know I'm notorious for highlighting things or referring back to it because what i do at every book that i read or most books that i read i'll go back to either the highlights or the bookmarks or you know notes or things like that and i'll transpose those into a journal Mm. just for some you know takeaways from the book Um, some people will you you know bookmark highlight and then if it's a physical book i like physical books but you know i've been using my kindle reading device a lot more over the last few years because it's a lot easier especially when you're on a plane to you know basically navigate and these kind of things ca- yeah. Ca- yeah yeah i can carry you know thousands of books in something that weighs about eight ounces and instead of trying to lug a thousand books onto the airplane which costs a lot of money <laughs> if you try to do that so don't don't do that so um but for me i i prefer reading instead of the audio because what again i find is if i'm reading it i'm you focusing f- you, on you, that. yeah you feel you you feel like you're engaged more into this because when i for example me myself and i when i'm in the car and driving i you i i am not that engaged with the audiobook mm-hmm. but if i put music on i am engaged with the music so you know right. so yeah well yeah it makes speaking, sense speak, of- speaking of good time and leisure time so 
I am driving, so let me make the driving time a little bit of fun time. So I would listen to music and have a bit of fun for 30 minutes while driving instead mm-hmm. of listening to a book. Yeah. So I think that also <laughs> maybe could be a good idea. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it does. And one thing, and, I, I, and again, I, I, I feel bad. I wish I could dig up who taught me this because it was some, a social media post that I saw years ago. And if you have difficulty relaxing yourself, let's say you're reading a book, whether it's on a Kindle or a physical book, and your, your focus is problematic, you're, you're not able to get into the book, even though it's a subject that you like, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. Um, this individual said, listen to classical music in the background while you're reading it without lyric, you know, without vocals. Mm. So listen to classical music because there's something with classical music that helps you, I don't know, focus a little bit better. And I don't know. And I, and he, the article that he wrote, and I, I should probably just Google it. I'll probably find it. Um, but you know, the article went on to talk about, you know, the science of that and, you know, what your brain is doing to do it. So whenever I read, I'll usually put in my earbuds and and put on, or I'll have it depending if no one else is home, uh, I'll put it over the speakers and listen to classical music while I'm reading. Mm -hmm. And what happens is the reading flow for me is better. I retain more and it's just, it's good. And you know, I'm, I, am actually, I actually, actually, it's it's weird you mentioned that. Actually, I, it happened to me once by accident. I was listening to uh, music. My, I'm listening to rock and metal kind of music. So I had mm-hmm. them once on the on my computer, and I was mm-hmm. actually reading. I didn't really focus that much on reading, but suddenly, because I had, uh, if you remember, when when amp the program called when amp this playlist program that you put all your MP3s in it and plays randomly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then it, it switched to a classical music piece and suddenly I felt good listening to that music while reading. <laughs> yeah, there's it, something it was, about it. <laughs> it was strange. Yeah, there's something about it. And again, I'm going to, after our call, I'm, I'm going to go look it up and see if I can find uh, the person that shared that or at least the original article that he referenced because it for me it it was a game changer for my ability to kind of retain and, and relax myself to focus on on reading because as entrepreneurs you know our brains are constantly going and all over the place you need and to listen to classical music <laughs> exactly 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 and you know and and, and i'm sure you know um, maestro roger nirenberg was somebody that i you know know and uh he was uh you know, the conductor for the new york philharmonic orchestra many many years ago and now he's a leadership and business consultant um but yeah you know it's there's there's leadership it it just there's something about it you know and you think about it's like well think about classical music how long it's been around it's been around centuries now you know i'm i'm hoping that that rock and metal and the music of today (laughs) we some of it the pop the pop music the top 40 now that i don't i don't think i don't think we need to carry that forward but you know, the, the, the rock, especially, you know, from, you know, the seventies and eighties and first part of nineties. And of course, you know, the metal scene and all that, and uh, all that stuff. I, hopefully that transcends the test of time. We'll find out, but, or we won't, but maybe generations after us will, but yeah. uh, so, so hopefully, you know, so speaking of that, what would you say one takeaway for the people who are listening to us can do to keep burning out away or if they are now in this stage and they are being burned out how they can move from this stage or this place i I think the big takeaway is make sure that you're doing things in life you enjoy doing even if it's just a few minutes a day here or there don't stop doing things in life you enjoy doing Um, figure out a way to get those things in and prioritize those don't try to squeeze them in between things, you know, prioritize them, schedule them. And what you'll find is you'll feel better. You'll be able to navigate through stressful situations better because you're coming at things in a more relaxed and rested state. And when you do that, then the stress won't get prolonged and without prolonged stress, you won't burn out. Yeah. Michael, where can people get in touch with you? Best way to find me is go to breakfastleadership.com. 
all my social media links are probably at the bottom. I think it's at the bottom of my website. I always forget. And up at the top, there's all kinds of resources, blog. I um, generate a ton of content around business and burnout and a variety of different things. There's a couple online courses that I have to become burnout proof and my podcast and all of that. It's the Breakfast Leadership Show. You can find that pretty much everywhere. But yeah, reach out. You know, there's a contact section right on the front page. So if you know, have a question or follow-up question regarding uh, our chat today, then by all means, reach out. I'm more than happy to have a chat. Well, thank you for being here today with me on this episode. Uh, a lot of fun, a lot of info. Very important, actually, because a lot of people, I'm sure, uh, will always have this kind of thing that's burn out or being uh, they don't feel to do certain things even if they actually have to so eventually we are humans and we cannot treat ourselves as machines because as you mentioned also machines take rest and maintenance so be human that's it thank you michael thank you